Hi, my name is Sam Shuey from Maple Systems. Let's go through how to use the step sequencer instructions that are part of the program control letter logic instructions in the Mapware 7000 programming software. These include the step sequence initialize, the step sequence input, and the step sequence output instructions. A step sequencer is a set of instructions that determine the order in which a group of processes are performed. In a manufacturing plant, you may wish to control a series of events including which event occurs next and how long each event must run before the next event occurs. This used to be called a drum sequencer and the idea is that it would allow a machine or motor to do a series of repetitive steps. Before PLCs came along, this was typically accomplished using a cylindrical drum that would turn at some rate of speed by a motor. The drum had a series of pegs that would turn on and off several output switches as the drum would spin. The Mapware 7000 software supports three sequencers functions that are used together to create a step sequence in ladder logic. The step sequence initialize instruction is used to clear all of the coils that are used in the sequence. The number of coils or sequence steps can be set from 1 to 64. This instruction starts the sequence by turning on the first coil. The step sequence input instruction is used by the ladder logic program to determine when the reference coil of operand A is the current step that is being executed. In this example, operand A is bit B200. If the input to this instruction is on and B200 is on, then the output of this instruction becomes active. The step sequence output instruction is used to discontinue the existing step and proceed to the next step. This is accomplished when the input to this instruction is active. Then the coil referenced in operand A, which in this example is B201, is turned on and the output of this instruction is activated. The best way to illustrate this example is to show these instructions in a ladder logic program. Before we do that, let's look at a screen that I've created that should help to show the potential uses of the step sequencer. On this screen, you can see a step sequencer that has five stages or steps. These stages are configured to control six outputs. In this example, the outputs control some lamps that you see along the bottom of the screen. For each stage, there is a data table that indicates which lamp will be on and which lamp will be off during that step. To the right of the table, we have a time frame with precision down to tenths of seconds. This time interval can be adjusted to vary the length of the time that each step is active before moving on to the next step. So, when this sequencer operates, it will automatically go through each of the five steps in sequence. Once stage five has been completed, the sequencer will begin with stage one again and continuously repeat the sequence. Also, notice that we have a button that is used to start the sequence and one that will temporarily halt the sequence. Now let's take a look at the ladder logic that is used to control the sequencer. At first glance, this may look a bit complicated, but it is actually just a series of repetitious rungs that do the same thing. The first two rungs are used to set up the sequence. Rung number one is simply used to create a 10 millisecond timer that runs continuously. It is used to set the time intervals of each step in the sequence. B100 is used to restart the timer. B101 is used to indicate that the timer is finished so that the step sequencer can advance to the next stage. Rung number two initializes the sequence. Notice that we have set the total number of steps to be five. B110 is controlled by the initialize sequence button that we saw on screen number one. Note that B200 is turned on to start the sequence. Rung number three is the first of two rungs that will be used for each stage of the sequence. This particular rung is for stage number one. When stage number one is active, this rung sends the predefined data points to the output coils. It also sends a predefined time interval for that stage to the timer. Rung number four is the second of two rungs for each stage. In this case, when stage number one is active, this rung causes the next stage in the sequence to become active. It does this by using the STIN or step sequence input instruction and the STOT or step sequence output instructions. The STIN instruction is used to determine if the current step, in this case stage number one, is active. If it is, then it will activate the STOT instruction, which in turn deactivates stage number one and activates stage number two. Notice that this only happens when the timer, controlling B101, times out. The rest of the ladder lungs are copies of rungs number three and number four for each stage. Notice that the last stage, stage number five, 
initiates the step sequence to repeat by setting B200, the first step. To see how the sequencer works, let's download this project to an HMC 7057. Okay, as you can see, I've used the task folder in screen number one to copy some predefined values into the ta data table. I have also set each timer interval to three seconds. The outputs below are all off. Let's start the sequence by pressing the initialize sequence button. As you can see, the ladder logic program starts with the output states configured for stage one and uses these to turn on or off the output lamps on the bottom of the screen. After a few seconds, the step sequencer moves on to stage two. The outputs are adjusted to conform to the data in stage two. This proceeds through stages three, four, and five. Then the process repeats itself with stage one. One of the advantages of using a step sequencer is that you can reconfigure the sequence of output states by simply putting in new data into the data table. For example, I may want to change the output configuration for stage number four, so I simply enter a new data stream. This is much easier than reprogramming the ladder logic program. I can also change the time intervals of each state. For example, I may want the interval for stage number three to be one and a half seconds and stage number five to be four seconds. If I press the halt sequence button, the sequencer temporarily stops. It will resume where it left off when I press the halt sequence button again. If I press the halt sequence button to temporarily stop the sequencer, I can press the initialize sequence button to start the sequencer from step number one. This completes our video on how to use the step sequence instructions that are available using the ladder logic of the HMC 7000 series. Please consult the Mapware 7000 help files and the HMC 7000 series operations manual for more details on these and other features of the HMC 7000 or visit our website at www.maplesystems.com for more video tutorials, specifications and other helpful materials on the HMC 7000.